Hi guys, welcome back to the vlog. We're going to be over at Thunder Valley today playing a little 1-3. I just heard some good news. Uh, Sacramento area is starting to reopen. And my understanding is that Capitol Casino will be open on Friday at 8 a.m. They still have to abide by a 10 p.m. curfew. And it's going to be outdoor uh, gambling, of course. But it's good news. Um, we've only had... Thunder Valley as an option. Uh, this gives us uh, another one. I imagine that Stones will also be opening up soon. So it's a good sign for poker in California, at least in the Sacramento area. I know that you guys down in LA are, are having your own issues and it might be quite a while before the casinos open up down there. Anyway, we're off to Thunder Valley. I hope you enjoy it. Here it comes. After a short wait, we start a brand new 1-3 game. Our starting sack is $300, and the first hand we look down at are two queens. We raise to 13, and only the small blind calls. The flop comes 9-6 deuce with two clubs. He checks to me, and I check it back here for deception. Turn card comes as a four clubs. He checks again. I just bet and take it down at this point. I raise a limper to 15 with queen jack suited. Flop is pretty good. Comes jack deuce three. He checks to me and I just continue and he quickly folds. This game has been very passive for the last half hour. I spotted my nemesis and new friend from the other day over at the other table. He was interested in coming over and playing with us. So when the person in seat one left, I went ahead and waved him over and he did get a seat change. So of course, once he limps in, I'm going to go ahead and raise my Jack 10 suited and we go heads up to the flop, just like the good old days. Flop comes five, six, seven with two hearts, definitely in his range and definitely not in mine. So I go ahead and check it back when he checks to me. Turn card comes as a two of spades, and now he leads. I'm just going to get out of the way and wait for a better spot. The under the gun player raises to 10. The small blind calls. I defend from the big blind with seven eight of clubs. The under gun player bets 15. I decide to call here with plans of betting any blank turn. I think he's more prone to have either ace high or a middling pair. So with 60 in the center, the turn card comes is a king, which kills my idea of representing some sort of king here. So I decide to check it. He checks it back. River card comes as a four and he takes a small stab at it for 15. I just have to fold. Our friend in seat one decides to open for $7. I'm going to give him some action here on the button with queen five of clubs. Both blinds call for the $7. So we go four ways to a flop of king, seven, five, two hearts, one club. It gets checked to me. I just check it back. Turn card is a five. It gets checked to the big blind who takes a stab for $12. Our friend in seat one calls and I decided to raise here. Looking back at this, I would prefer to make a smaller raise or even just flat it to keep everyone's range in it. But as played, I raised to 40 more on top of their bet. And the first player folds fairly quickly. And now my friend in seat one goes into the tank. He's talking to me, asking me if I have something like an ace high. I don't think he got it. And he's very close to putting in a call. I think if the size was a little bit smaller, he would definitely call. But he shows a pair of threes and it hits the muck. This next hand's kind of interesting. I was in the big blind with 8-5 offsuit. Get to see a free flop. Flop is 8-5, eight, so I flop two pair. 
and I check it and it gets checked around. Turn card comes as a six of diamonds. I go ahead and lead for $10. Player to my direct left calls. And now the player in the back, he raises to 75. Uh, he's a trappy kind of player. And I'm thinking that he has something like a set or two pair. And he's afraid of a flush and straight draws. I just get out of the way. Under the gun opens for a raise to eight. I call with ace queen off. And the big blind also calls. So we go three ways to a flop. Flop is nothing for me. It comes king, four, three, all different suits. Big blind checks. The initial raiser bets small. I have a good read on him that he's very weak here. So I decide to steal the pot. I raise to 22. Now the big blind jams his entire stack in. Obviously he was laying in the weeds here and I get caught with my hand in the cookie jar. Our friend in seat one ended up leaving so we asked for a table change and was moved over to another table with some bigger stacks and more action. Our first hand is ace jack offsuit, re raise to 15, and just the blinds call. The flop is 8 8 deuce, and when they check to me, I bet $20. I expect to take it down here most of the time. They both quickly fold. Re raise with 9 7 of clubs in the hijack to 12. Both blinds call. So three ways to the flop of ace, eight, six with two spades. So we have an open ender here, a disguised hand, and the player in the big blind bets 15. We decide to call. Turn card is a six of diamonds. Now he leads again, this time for, you know, a small amount of $22 for the size of the pot. I don't know exactly what it is, whether it was just his bet sizing or his mannerisms, but I'm putting him on a, a flush draw here, and, and he was trying to, like, name his price that he wants to draw it for. So my plan here is to call and to bet any non-spade or raise with any non-spade on the river. So we don't have to worry about bluffing when the river card comes as a five of diamonds. He bets again for 22, another small bet. Here I like to raise to 80. I'm pretty sure he has a flush draw and I wanted to raise a small enough amount where he might be incentivized to play back at me. So after thinking for quite some time, he ends up putting in the fold. I'm not really sure whether he had that flush draw or not, but that's what I, my read was, so I went with my read. It's possible that he might have had an ace with a weak kicker and just decided to give it up. But my line looks pretty strong, and I'm happy to take it down. This particular hand, I had ace-king offsuit on the button. I raise to 15 and get two callers. Flop is king 8-3 with two clubs. They check to me and I decide to check it back here for deception. Turn card comes as a 10 of clubs. First person checks, next person makes a small bet of $11. I decide to flat. River card comes as a blank, a six of hearts. They lead again for $11. I'm just going to call. And they show queen 10 of diamonds. And here is the hand of the day. We look down at two red sixes under the gun, raised to 12. A solid player puts in a raise to 35. He's a very good player, and I have a lot of respect for his play. It gets folded back around to me, and here I decide to go ahead and set mine. I put him on a very strong hand, aces, kings, maybe queens. 
So we go to the flop of 9, 3, 6, which is a perfect flop for my hand. If he has an overpair here, I expect him to bet and to bet on the larger size. My most likely hands, if I continue, are sets, of course, which he has to watch out for. Overpairs like tens, jacks, or possibly queens, or more likely a flush draw. So when I call here, I think my hand looks more like the flush draw than anything else. So when a seven of spades comes on the turn and I check, I'm expecting him to bet again and on the larger size. He's trying to price out my most likely hand, which is a flush draw, but he's also in a tough spot because he could be running into a set. Those are the two most likely hands I have at this point. He ends up betting 125 to price out a flush draw or make it difficult for me to continue with the flush draw. And at this point, I think I have to go ahead and raise the board is too coordinated. I don't want a scare card to come off on the river that may let him get away from his hand. So I go ahead and jam for 237 more. Now he's in a real tough spot. I'm sure he thinks that there's a excellent chance I have a set, but there's also an excellent chance I'm making a move. I have been known to make big moves like this before. So after thinking for a while, he ends up putting in the reluctant call and I show him that I had the set and he says, yeah, I thought so. With the three on the river, I make a full house and take down this monster pot. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time.